Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing my five favorite add-ons. Now, some of them are paid and some of them are free. So, and I, I will advise you which ones are paid and which ones are free and the price if I could find it in a real quick Google search. So let's get into it. So we're here in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I'm going to do this video in the add-ons I use least to most. So my most favorite one is going to be at the end. So the one, I don't use this much, although I do like to fly realistically. I don't use it much because it's not well implemented yet. There's not a whole lot of uh, controllers for this, and you'll see what I mean. So it's called VATSIM. It is free to use. You can download it off of Google. Just search up VATSIM. Or there's a, another option called IVAO, Inu Victor Alpha Oscar. But this is VATSIM. It's basically an online ATC where players, other people can be your air travel control. The only problem is there's not a lot of people. There's only usually like 50 controllers in the entire world. So as you can imagine, it leaves gaps. What? I'll show you guys what it is. I won't enable it because that's a lot of pain. But here it is. Uh, you can see that we have the frequencies on the left. And obviously, if I hit connect up on the top left, it will connect me since I'm in the sim. Uh, you. Before you do that, you have to file a flight plan. Um, yeah. Before you do that, you have to file a flight plan by going here, VFR, IFR, putting your departure airport, destination airport, time, estimated time and route, and fuel available, cruise speed, and cruise altitude. Uh, you can hit file flight plan. And once you hit file flight plan, it will come here and it will say, you know, flight plan filed, ready to connect. You can then go hit connect and, you know, all the controllers direction. Um, the how they do it is say you're in, I don't know, Seattle and say there's no tower controller and there's no ground controller. But there is a, I don't know how they do this because I've never flown to Washington, but, but say there's a Washington controller, like, you know, for the entire state. You would call up Washington controller, say, hey, I'm at, you know, Seattle Airport, Seattle International, and I'm going to follow my IFR flight plan or VFR flight plan. You know, you can do your own research on that um, however you want. Um, but yeah, so that is, that's Vatsim. On to the next one. The next one is called Luke Air Tool. And this is actually really cool because it's, it's for you airliner pilots out there or airliner sim pilots. It allows you to, what my favorite usage of it, it has a lot of different things you can do in it, but my favorite usage is the audio it's really well i'll show you guys it so if you go up here and click on announcements i'll show you it uh there so yeah if you click on announcements it brings up this page and when you hit this page, you can hit, okay, which, which airliner want? I don't know why you guys can't see it, but there's like hundreds of airlines all the way from like uh, Wizz Air to Aeroflot, Air Lingus, you know. I currently have selected a Yanka. 
but you can select, you know, Delta, Emirates, Frontier, JetBlue, KLM, Lufthansa, Qatar, Ryanair, Southwest, Spirit. Let's go, let's actually go Spirit. And then you can, once you select the airline, you can hit welcome and it'll play the welcome briefing. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard Spirit Airlines. First expedited boarding process, we need your help. Once you find your seat, slide out of the aisle and the passengers behind you by. Place those small items underneath. Your seat in the emergency exit row. Please review your safety information card. Look over the selection criteria. If you do not meet the selection criteria or simply wish not to sit there, if you don't feel comfortable, let a flight attendant know and we'll receive. Then you can stop it at any time. You can play, you know, seatbelt on. So it's not just the ding noise when you hit the, the seatbelt switch in the plane. Um, and obviously, this this is a separate add-on, so it works with, with any plane you want. Uh, I really like it. I use it whenever I fly airliners, which isn't a lot. That's why it's number two on this list. Okay, and next we will be doing FS Realistic. FS Realistic is... Um, it's $30 for the pro version, which is the version I have. It's really nice. So here is the uh, UI. This is the UI before you start a flight. So let's go into the simulator. And I will start off, go ahead and start a flight. Okay, there we go. My, my controller was uh, on its side. So it was hitting the joystick. <laughs> Uh, let's go to, I don't know, where I flew last time. And we'll, we'll just start off, you know, set his departure in my PA-28. It's one of my favorite planes, and it's the one I'm doing my, uh, my career playthrough. I'm obviously not recording it, but that's the next, one of the next add-ons I'll show you. So once this loads in, this adds a lot of really cool sounds and, you know, shake, um, like haptic feedback. It's really fun. There we go. And I'm going to hide that. It's still there. And once it loads, we'll be on our way. Okay, I don't know why it's, it insists on making it snowy all the time, but it does. Forget you saw that sky person. <laughs> um, Let's actually change the weather because I don't oh freezing fog. Why freezing fog? Okay. October 5th. So notice the actually first I'll show you the uh UI now. It has changed. So we're back here. And now we have effects. We have all these different effects. Stall buffet, stick shaker, even the occasional toilet flush. You can you can set and you can set the volume for it, wind ambience, windshield wind, and you can there's there's breathing. Uh there's clear prop when you start. So when you start the engine, it's it's really, really nice. So I'm gonna turn this volume down a little bit. And cockpit ambience, engine start and vibrations. But anyway, we'll go back to the simulator. And I will actually do this and I'll turn off the engine so you can hear the it call clear prop. So mixture for rich, landing light, fuel pump. And the starter is actually here, so there we go. Oh, did it not didn't do it? Why didn't it do it? There we go. Master, Master, Avionics. I have no idea why it's not doing it, but... Oh. 
Mixture for rich. Engine start. We can just hit preview. Yeah, see, that's the. I just previewed the, you know, the movement. But then here's clear the, prop. Clear prop when you start the engine. And your vibrations. The plane is slightly shaking. And another really cool thing, I use this in my JP Logistics playthrough. You hit a button. It actually puts you in a sort of third person view. The camera right now is a little wonky, but puts you in a third person view. And I believe, yeah, you can control the control surfaces, flaps, anything you have found, elevators, and the stabilator. Because this technically isn't an elevator. A lot of people don't know that this is not an elevator. This is a horizontal stabilizer, also a stabilator. The stabilizer, uh, horizontal stabilizer and elevator in one. Um, so, also blade slapping. Yeah. Okay. Uh, landing applause even. Well yeah. done. We Smooth definitely landing. touched down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Blow up. out turbulence. Lots of turbulence. Doesn't really do much. Prop wash. Sneezing. It's a view fly for a while. I think it's 45 <laughs> minutes. I think it's 45 minutes. And if you're, your pilot will sneeze. <laughs> um... But yeah, wind ambience, prop wash, reverse thrust, scary ride even. So that's like if you overbank, um, you know, any of those things. Okay, let, let's see if it'll yell clear prop when I do this. No, why? Maybe it's just the default planes that it does it with, but I don't think so. Let's do just a takeoff. Parking brake set. Temperature and pressure green. And full power. Let's check it up. And there's the live 60 knots, 70 knots, and on the right. So you can see there was quite a bit of shaking on the takeoff. And if we Yeah, see there's that there's that blade slapping. Which is kind of annoying. So I'm gonna turn the blade slapping off. We're in a plane. I think blade slapping in the F is realistic. Uh, menu, it shows a picture of a helicopter, so I think it's for helicopters. But anyways, it's coming for a pretty sketchy landing. We're in the white arc, so if we can put our down. I'm trying to get them to scream, but I guess they don't want to scream. That's that. That is FS Realistic. I use this one a lot. It should be this one and the next two. We have two more. I use almost equally the, the same. I use FS Realistic is on all the time. There's no flight where I don't use it. So let us go on to the next one. And the next one is... The next one is Neofly.
Uh, so this is the UI for NeoPlan. If we go into it, you can see my, my career at $15,716 at my hotel Echo Romeo and my player is Aerosol 1, which is the flight school I'm currently in, in real life. You can delete or you can add a new career mode, career employee, you know, okay. So I will do that. I don't know where it went. I clicked start. Oh, there, there it goes. It's loading. And it's, it's pretty realistic, I think. Um, so since we're not at Microtel Echo Romeo, it will error if we try to start a mission. But you can do you can do a lot of different different missions. Uh, you can do some like military drug running in the list of jobs where you fly under a thousand feet, AGL the whole way, and you have to land in a really, you know, not a runway, <laughs> just like a dirt area near the the point on the map. Or you can do you can have passengers. Yeah, and oh, okay, cargo obviously, and it, just like in real life, you have to manage your own plane, insurance, maintenance. Obviously, the plane. I, I've done like five flights already, total. So my plane isn't that broken, and I've kept good uh, maintenance of the engine during flight. You know leaned when I should, um, maintenance, fuel, like fuel load, and you have to pay for fuel and stuff. Um, and obviously, when you are at an airport, you can see that there's the planes for sale, or you can rent. So what I, what I'm trying, what I want to do is rent like a I want to rent like a DA62 eventually, but they're, they're really expensive. It takes forever to make money in this game. When you first start out, so you can see all my, my landing <laughs> rates. Uh, don't mind this, the negative 363. That was on a grass strip that was only like 700 feet long. So I had to smash it down. But the rest are like 66, 60, 36, 34. I don't know how I have a positive landing rate, but K, uh, 211. Uh, and then your ratings, obviously. So to get a new rating, to be able to fly like something like the DS62, you can you can go. This one is a uh, my Golf Quebec Zulu, Kezaltenango, and pay $600 to get your multi-engine. Then you can get your uh, single engine, I think, turboprop? Yeah, mono turbo propeller plane, and then mono uh, dual multi engine turbo propeller, which isn't a rating in real life. Neither of those are. Your E is mandatory to flight two engine plane. How, how uh, specific? It's the A310 and A320 Neo, which would be so cool. Um, and obviously, it's like a real checklist. They, they tell you to start the plane by the checklist, take off for my single engine. They told me to take off. After takeoff, do a traffic pattern, do a touch and go, fly up to 5,000 feet and simulate an engine failure and make it back to the runway. So not, not that hard. Um, quad, quad engine plane, it's only the 747 currently. Helicopter, I need to fly helicopter, which which I also want to get into because I, I have the H145 and we have the Velocity and the Bell and the G2. And then I don't know why, but there's a jet rating, military aircraft, the Raphael and the F-18, 
right now, single engine, multi engine, good for me. But all the multi engine planes are like almost probably a million on average. So why get the rating now? I only got 15,000 and each mission is like 4,000. Uh, so you can see my yeah, MSLP to MSLM. MSLM is a really short graph strip right here. MHLP, that's also a grass strip, but it's a bit longer. And then MHER is where I currently am. And you can see the bonus security. You know, if you fill, if you get all of them, which I never have, I don't know why. I guess here I overbanked or I landed too hard. Yeah, probably the landing fee per minute. Um, you can take out a loan and see your, you know, statistics and like you can see all the uh and you can see buying fuel for the pa28 72 dollars which that's about right i bought i think 15 gallons and that was that's about right for here at least i don't know about in the us but for here oh it is frozen <laughs> So, yeah, you can manage your add-ons. Uh, which I have, I have a lot of these, actually. I have a ton of, ton of add-ons for this plane, or for this, this simulator. So, yeah, that, that is Neo Flying. It's a really fun career mode, and the best part is it's free. It's, I don't know why it's free, but it is, and I like it. So, the... I won't do a mission for you because they're they're usually pretty long, as you can see, like 30 nautical miles. 30 nautical miles in a P28 takes a while. It takes like 20 minutes. And the next one, and the final one, my most used other than FS Realistic, is called Little Nav Map. Little Nav Map, you saw me use this in the JP Logistics videos. It is basically a it's like four flight but for free and it has some other things that four flight doesn't like flight tracking you can track so you can see the the flight we just did in the warrior you can see our arc and you can see where we currently are sitting on the runway in our plane and you can see on the right here pa28 Aircraft heading to, I don't know what PPH is, pints per hour, <laughs> uh, indicated airspeed, you can see wind direction, sea level pressure, 30.39 is our QNH, visibility more than 20 miles, rain, so yeah, and there's obviously uh, restricted areas, like, like this restricted area is for the uh, Empaha Americana is the U.S. Embassy of San Salvador, and it's approximately right here. No, it's like here, right there. Um, and all these other smaller ones are the are power stations, and this one is a port. You can see the ILS glide slope. And if I right click here and hit stroke procedures, you can see all the center instrument departures, departures. There's a, a, a lot of them. And you can do arrival, stars. Yeah. ILS approach, and it'll even for the ILS approach, it shows what to do in case of a go around or a missed approach. Sorry, uh, so that it's the same ILS, they're just changing the missed approach. I'm not an instrument pilot, my instrument rated, so I don't know what that's about. Yeah, I don't really know what that's about. 
but you can click on any of these waypoints, you know, add a range, whatever you want to it. That didn't really do much. <laughs> um, and you can select, say, I have, because I've downloaded Elopongo, my triple Sierra, as an add-on. So I've selected it, Mark Airport, as an add-on. But And I also have um, La Aurora as an add-on. I have Comalapa as an add-on. I have Tonkin Team as an add-on. And say, all right. And I have more. I have JFK, I have the Guardia, and, and look, now it looks like we're flying. And you can turn off uh, none, 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 none. You can turn off all the airspaces, which I like to see. Like JFK, I have that. I say add on it. Uh, my computer does not like it because I'm on a laptop, but so this I use this a lot, and I also have Miramar and San Diego. I don't know why. Yeah, here I'll mark this one because I know I have this one. Oh, and it's marked. Uh, there's airports in the entire world, and you can come up here and search. Let's go. Mm -hmm. MHRO, Roatan. Nobody knows what Roatan is. You can hit show on the map. Boom, Roatan. And then you can go, you say it's departure. Then you can go MMMX, Mexico City. You can hit add this destination. You see a range, track, 741 nautical miles. Well, look at all those airspaces. And then if you want to do control arrival procedures, you can add that. And if you see one that you want or that, that you like, you can do this. Say I want this to star 23 left, arrival 23 left. You can hit insert into flight plan, 23, mm, I'll do 23 left, 23 left. Boom. Go to the VOR and do this arc for whatever reason. I don't really know how this works. I know how to do it in, in this application, but I don't know how it works in real life. I think you need a arrival and approach. So you need to add an approach all out of insert at a plaza. But yeah. That's it. And then you can hit new flight plan. No. So that is all. I thank you guys so much for watching. If this was an informational video for you, go ahead and like and subscribe. And if you want, I can do some videos, some more videos of the add-ons I use because I use a lot of add-ons. Not as much as these. These are the ones I use the most. Or I can do add-ons, like, you know, tests of planes in the simulator, you know, payware. So, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe so you could, don't miss my next video. I'll probably post again in another 10 or so days. I like to keep this schedule, and I thank you.